Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm with Jonathan and we're going to be creating a European silver birch forest. So the pot that I got for this particular planting, which is going to be pretty extensive in number of trees, is from Chris Henry. And as you can see, it's really a large pot. It's like 31 inches this way and it is 16 inches that way. So this pot has two main drainage holes, quite large, but unfortunately it's only got four holes for retention. So that in itself uh, caused a little bit of a challenge. And so what we've done is gotten one of these particular bamboo bases that stretch out. And what those are is uh, flower bed edging from, uh, for, for gardening. And I had some kicking around in my yard and I decided this is probably the best route to go. Once we nail this down to these four points, we ought to be able to then loop the wire across to retain all the tree bases in their spots. So with every pot, there's always a, a, a good side and a bad side, or a preferred side. So we've decided this side here is the preferred side that we're going to utilize. So all of our trees from a composition standpoint will go from this side to this side and elevate always to the ends. So it's, um, it, it seems unusual that you, we would pick a side for a pot, but you really do have to look at them closely because they are handmade and they do have some uh, anomalies here and there. Before we begin any forest planting, you have to think about what you envision for the design of the forest. And there's a lot of options. Um, birch trees, European silver birches that we're using today, are what's called a pioneer tree. They tend to grow in areas where a lot of other trees don't grow. And they spread by root suckers, and so one tree can fill a whole field eventually. So you often get a pure stand of just birches in a forest. So the, my first experience with birches uh, was on a camping trip uh, to the Bruce Peninsula up near Lion's Head, an absolutely gorgeous area. And um, I just bought a new home, uh, totally unlandscaped, and I uh, saw these two little birches, size of my finger, uh, growing in rock. So out they came into the camper all the way home and uh, I plunked them in the ground not thinking anything about what is a birch like what does it not like and today those birches went from my finger size to at least 24 inches in diameter what I really like about birch was that uh, they have this lovely white bark and they stand out in your garden and I've always had an affinity for uh, white birch so I said to myself if I'm ever going to do a planting and it's going to be a group planting, it's going to be birch. Which doesn't say mean to say that trying to maintain this birch uh, grouping isn't going to be challenging over the long term because they are very susceptible to, in the spring, suddenly they don't come out and bloom. There's a branch that dies here and a branch that dies there. And the ones that I had in the garden actually did that. And I've had branches that were that big in the spring that were dead for no reason and I've not been able to figure out why and all the reading that I've done really confirms that that hasn't been figured out yet. Okay so the trees that I've got selected here are uh, nursery trees and they came from uh, the bonsai guy and uh, I bought everything that he had in stock <laughs> so I don't know where if I if I have one of these trees down the road that that needs attention and replacing we'll have to do some real searching. But the interesting thing about uh, nursery trees is, is that down below the surface, they're usually planted quite deeply. There's a lovely nabari, and you can, you can check and see that down here, there's another almost two inches before we get down to the root surface. And um, we'll, once we get this all pulled out, we'll get to see what's really below the surface. So even with uh, nursery stock, we're getting evidence of uh, the death of branches because of this uh, sudden phenomenon. So this particular tree at one point in time was a, uh, was a, a dual trunk. And uh, as you can see, 50% of this tree has already died and that's what's left of it. And it's got a huge, huge base. And uh, 
it should be an interesting part of the composition. And the tree beside it also, as you can see, died, half 50% of it died. And uh, that's what's left of this particular unit as well. So one of the nice things about the fall uh, is the fact that you can get things like mushrooms growing out of the pine bark that's in, in our soil composition. So uh, one of the things that we normally do is wire trees to get the shape that we want to uh, evolve to. And in this particular case, these branches on this particular tree were very, very close to each other and pointing vertically. I put wires around here and tied them down to the pot and within six weeks it cut into the bark. I removed it right away and I've gone to spreaders. So I've got a, a branch spreader here and I've got another branch spreader up here. And what I normally use is either a piece of bamboo but what I found that worked really well was green twigs. I just cut them off. They're nice and malleable. You trim up, just slit them on the ends and slit them in and they, they just form. And then as they're, they're hardening up, they're, they're, they stay more and more permanent all the time. So one of the things that, uh, maybe it's because I'm an engineer, I have to have a blueprint of what I'm doing so that I can visualize it and plan it out. And uh, it kind of goes back to the old automotive Toyota uh, system of plan, 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 execute. So um, I, what I've done is I, I cut out a, just a, a format of the base and then as we decide which trees are going to go where, I would put a stone here, a stone there, a stone here possibly, one up here, and so on, all in the places so that we can visually see can we see all of the trunks looking from the front to the back? Should this one go here? Should this one go here? And so on and so forth. So once we've done that, um, I usually circle out the, the uh, spots and then as I do that, I number them and then I label my trees and then number them so that we can do them in sequential order. And we've got some sort of a plan that looks like, this looks like it'll work but in the end, there's always fine tuning. One of the first operations we want to do with this forest before we start laying out the design is to sort all the trees by size. And it's not by the height of the tree. I do it by the diameter of the trunk because you can always grow a tree taller, but it's harder to increase the thickness of the trunk, especially once it goes into a bonsai pot. So birch trees uh, don't start their life with nice beautiful white trunks uh, and bark. They start out like these that which are very dark bark and here's one that is just at the verge of going from the dark side to the lighter side. This one is just transitioning. It's about 50% white now and then eventually they will turn this color and as they become older and older you start to get these flaking off of the bark and, and black uh, marks all the way across it, which make a really nice composition of the bark of black and white. Uh, the, par uh, the trees that I brought up from the uh, wild uh, that were huge, I could peel the bark off just like paper. And, and some of these trees are called paper bark birch. And they're be absolutely beautiful, and that's what really attracts me to this particular species. Yep. Polished river rocks, Those nothing are nothing but the best. You know what? I've got a <laughs> planting that's happening right now Yeah. Uh, that I've, I got in a pot like this, and I've got that river rock around it, and then I've got some Bruce Peninsula, a Bruce Peninsula stone in the middle, and it looks like Georgian Bay. Oh, nice. A stone, and I got, I want, I put one windswept tree in it. Wow, what? that must look good. This is not a light pot, is it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Why don't we put the trees and the dirt in it? I know. <laughs> it's gonna, I'll need a fork truck to move it around my yard. I know. It'll look good though. It'll be a nice showpiece for your yard. And when all these trunks turn white, everyone will be very envious of your <laughs> forest. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's perfect. All yeah. right. Right? So then the, that looks good. 
So when I was up in the Bruce Peninsula back in the 70s and I brought home a couple of these little birches for my garden, the, the thing that I saw that impressed me the most was a, a whole forest planting that was natural. And there was, there was a whole grove of white birch and it was the fall and the leaves were all yellow. It was absolutely gorgeous and that's what I'm trying to transcend back to this pot. It was uh, a dominant tree that seemed to be the master of the grove right out front and uh, I thought boy if we could duplicate that in some shape form uh, on in the pot here it would be wonderful. We've got Jonathan's idea of his forest in mind, his, his vision. So now it's We've got to pick out the trees. Uh, he had that vision of the dominant tree, maybe on higher ground than the one surrounding it, possibly. Uh, so we've got to pick out that dominant tree. And several of these trees are close to the same size. We don't have one tree that stands out as having a trunk twice as thick as any of the others. So I'm going to suggest for the dominant tree that it actually be a clump of trees where we might combine a couple of trees together and plant them you know really close so it looks like a clump coming up and that's what your eye focuses in on and then the rest of the trees kind of surround the planting i'm thinking about the layout for this forest and these three stones represent the clump of the largest trees so they'll be fanning out and that will be the center point where your eye will focus in this planting and the rest of the trees will just be spread out to create the illusion of a forest. So I'm thinking the clump of three trees should be forward in the planting and all the rest of the trees in the background. And then to counteract that, our next largest tree should be off to the right hand side, slightly behind, and that'll balance the composition. So it won't be, all the weight won't be on the left hand side when you look at the overall forest, it'll look nice and evenly balanced. This is the initial layout that Jonathan and I have come up with. We have our central clump right here, offset. The second largest two trees will be either side, back further, and then all the smaller trees around the outside. So these will be the tallest trees and the most powerful, having the three together as a clump. And then as you go out from the planting, they'll get finer and finer and this will be also the highest point in the forest and all the trees will create that asymmetrical triangle for the top silhouette of the foliage. So now what we're going to do is we're kind of basically do an outline of the stones so that we know approximately where we're going to place these uh, because the stones obviously have to be removed and uh, by the time we get that done, we'll have a whole different geographical look to it. Okay, so the, the next thing we're going to do here is secure this bamboo grate down so that uh, when we put our trees in, we can wire around the bamboo and hold them in place. Um, so because we only have four wires in this particular pot, we're going to have to go through the bottom. The holes aren't clear. No, they but uh, maybe I should use a different gauge wire. It's going through there. It's going it through now. Yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. I think the bit of clay in the holes wasn't there. I think that'll do. That's okay. fairly even. Okay, if you hold that up, I'll try to okay. slide the other Put one the through other the one bottom. In. That's close enough there. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. That'll hold it down anyway. Yeah. So then. Yeah. This goes in. Yeah. That's amazing. What a time saver using that, eh? Isn't it? Yeah, that's perfect. And I think we probably should run a wire from the end around this wire. Yes. Just to keep it just spread out. Spread and so out because it, it does accordion back yeah, in on exactly. us, right? Yeah, exactly. I think that'll help. I think that's down good enough. That's good. That it really holds it nicely. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. Isn't that a, it, what a, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was going to send you a picture of it. And 
I just never got around to doing that. Well, I think you're going to set a trend. Everyone's going to be using these things now for forests. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, now that we've got our, our lovely grate down here, which I'm uh, really happy with. Yeah. It's uh, really good. We're going to put a base layer of soil in. Do you want a soil scoop, Jonathan? I've got uh, I can just pour this one in, I okay. think, for now, and then we can just spread it out. And this soil is from the bonsai guy. It is. This is all uh, from the bonsai guy. The reason I wanted to use this particular soil is because I think I mentioned to you, Nigel, that three of these trees had already been planted in a bonsai pot. Okay. And so, consequently, to start changing uh, any of the media from one style to another. Yeah. Uh, probably wouldn't work out very well. No, you want to keep your soil consistent exactly. for so, watering so it all dries out at the same rate. And Exactly. This is getting engineering, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay. Very much so. Exactly. We're going to begin work now on the three central trees. And we want to get them grouped as closely together as possible. And it may involve rotating them around until the roots kind of fit together so I can bring them in tightly or if they do have a fairly radial root system it may involve cutting off some of the roots on the one side so we can place them all close together and create a clump. So the three main trees that we've got we're going to start uh, uh, extracting them from the plastic pots that they're in. These two particular trees had already been previously planted in a bonsai pot so they're already for the most part, uh, don't need a lot of uh, work below the, below the surface. So there's one. And this one is is a dandy. Oh, I heard that snap. Mm -hmm. There, there we comes. go. Oh, oh look, look at all those that. roots. Oh, wow. That's a lot of roots. It's a lot of roots. That's a good sign, though. That and is a good sign. Ready? Number three. Oh, it's packed in there too. <laughs> there, there we go. go. Okay. And there we have them. Oh, I'll have to go in here. So, um, if this is going to be our dominant tree, yeah. Um, look at the, just look at this root base here. It looks like it's in two segments. It looks like. This was the original pot that it was in, yeah. and this was just the added material below it. Yeah. So I think we're safe to probably look and see if... Maybe remove that bottom part, eh? In fact, it, it was. I can see a, a, a drainage screen right here. Okay. See that? Okay. So it was just potted up quickly and... I think we can... Oh, look at this. It broke. Oh, okay. Oh, well. This is what happens. Yeah, most deciduous trees have very fragile deadwood. It doesn't last long. It just no. There we go. And that, believe it or not, just over the summer, I would say from the first of July is when these were taken out of their original bonsai pots and put into this pot. Look at how much has those roots have have gone down into the the original soil that we did to, to prop it up. Amazing. There's massive roots here. Massive roots. We'll have to make a decision on what we cut off and what we leave because yeah. as you can see all that bottom portion to me looks yeah. pretty useless. I don't know. So now we're going to start trimming off some of these way extra roots. And I noticed here, Nigel, that we've got a really dominant root here. Yeah. But it's curling around. And I'm really wondering if we can get away with... It almost looks like it's coming from this stem right here. Yeah. I think you have plenty of fine feeder roots here and then you could remove that. I think I think we'll cut take, it back anyway. I think we'll cut that right off. Yeah. 
just use this baby right here. There, you there go. it is. So we'll get closer to the Nabari here. Yeah. And I noticed that we're getting budding right down here at the bottom, which is kind of That's typical. A lot, isn't there? A, a lot of budding uh, on on a lot of these trees down at the bottom. Basically, talking really what that says is it's doing what they normally do. They like to shoot up little trees right around them and make clumps. That's pretty solid in there. Pretty solid. Yeah. That's probably pretty good. At least I you think can it see is. the surface roots. I think it is. I'll get a spray bottle and we'll just wash the surface roots so we can see sure. exactly what's going on. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, look at all of the budding that's going on around the base of this tree. It's going to next spring turn into a, a whole bunch of new shoots, which is very, very typical of the birch family. And that's why we end up with birch clumps, it's because of this kind of activity at the base of the trunk. My goodness. Lots of roots, eh? Lots of roots. Lots that's of roots. That's good. That's good. Look at this. It's better than having too few roots. Oh, gosh. It's a nice fine root mat, so it means, you know, the roots can be reduced quite a bit safely. This one has a beautiful nabari buried from the nursery. That one's pretty good, isn't this it? This is a beautiful example right here. Look at that. It's, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I mean, it was buried that far yeah. into the pot. Sometimes you get bad surprises. And yeah. Sometimes it works out well, sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. So far, so good. So what we've encountered here, Nigel, is quite a dilemma in the roots of this particular tree. We have got, over on this side, a mass. It's as hard as a rock, and it looks like this was in a pot, and it just circled and circled and circled, and it turned into this great mass. It's, it's literally, it's just a, like a solid mass, and I'm thinking that maybe we have got to bring out the saw now and chop this thing off right about here. We've got lots of good feeder roots around here. I think we're safe. Um, and as I mentioned to you early, it, it, the rule of thumb is to not take off more than 25% of the roots. But in this case, we have I don't to break know. the rules, eh? We have to break the rules and start going to church on Sunday. <laughs> Came off pretty good. Yeah. That's exactly right. Look at that. Just a solid rock of 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 uh, roots here that really was strangling, strangling the whole tree. Yeah. So this will give us a better opportunity to add it to our clump. And between all the three of them, it looks like we've got a good good selection of roots here that. Um, I, th I think we're safe. Okay. So we said this would be the dominant tree about here with its three here, something like this. Should we have them splayed out, do you think? Yeah, I think. And I think we're going to have to get them quite a bit closer together. I think so too. Um, I think we're going to have to do something with this, unless we turn this one around this tree what do you think this tree has where the dead trunk was yeah we can either hide that in the back or you can make that a feature of the tree it depends on you if you like it or if you what wanna... do you think do you think it's a feature or not um, I, I I don't feel bad about it it kind of helps tell the story or... I think I think it's going to rot away um, okay, then why don't we... and eventually your trunk will kind of come out of the soil at an angle and then straighten up, which will look quite nice. So I think if we do have that, it should be fanning away that part. Back to the back or the front? Um, maybe to the side. To the side like this? Yeah, but uh, let's see, that's sort of the thickest trunk, isn't it? I, I would probably put this on this side. Okay. And then this. Maybe here, 
and that one I think you'll want somewhere around there probably because it kind of fans out that way yeah it all comes out but then we've got to get them we've got to get these trunks so they're almost touching yeah we certainly do so, that so we're gonna have to do something with these now this one's pretty good because it doesn't have a lot of roots in this side this one doesn't this so side. this one's not too bad either no it's not really I think we're going to have to take the saw and just come down there I, I think that'll be the easiest solution okay. to get the trees close together so well, the problem we've got here is that in order to get these trunks closer we're gonna to have to take some of these roots off yeah so just looking at it we may have to bring the saw out again we, I've, I see some roots here that maybe we can nip off um, I'm a little concerned about that one though it looks like a dominant root I'm not it is very thick I'm not sure if we should um, get in there. When you have a clump you can't have them too far apart or they they don't, they look, don't right. look right. And I, I'm not sure that this in the middle it's kind of separating them don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. What if we lift it this way? That's, that's even far apart isn't it? Yeah maybe angle that tree a bit like so it's so? coming out. You don't want the the base of the tree is coming converging and then splaying out. No. That's why I kind of had it rotated around so this Okay. If we have it like this, let's try it again. It's splaying out right from the base. Yep. Um, oh yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I, so, it's a natural splay. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if there's any other way of doing that. Uh, I think it's just the way it is that do you think we should hack this off? I think so. I, I think... There's a piece of wire. Is there? Oh my goodness. Is that a piece of wire? Yeah. Oh, oh. it came out. Good. Oh, it was tied. So that was what was holding the tree That's what was holding the, the tree down originally. Yeah. Okay. Um, but do you see what I'm saying about that root there? Yeah, it's pretty major root. It's a major root. I'm not sure that... Maybe if we could just do that and take more yeah, off of this of side. that one and... You want to see what I can do that? Try that, yeah. Okay, I'll see if I can pull this this one apart a bit. Yeah, it's too bad it had that really thick root on the one side here. See, that's almost... It's getting it's close, getting isn't it? pretty close, isn't it? And then we have to get our third tree. That was going to come here. If we pull that up a little further, we can start cleaning this one off. Yeah, and maybe a bit more on each more side on of the, this here, right? to fit the three together. Yeah. Now we don't want our two front trees to be flat to the viewer. We want the whole thing to be rotated. Right. Right. Somehow. Right, so right. I like that idea right there. Nothing is, yeah. So this tree's out front, second and third. Yeah. And you still want to be able to see all three trunks from the viewing from the front. So. Which we can. And we don't want them evenly spaced either. No. You don't want this tree exactly between these two. No. So it's all just filling around until you get this natural looking natural position. Natural feeling. Yeah. So well, it looks like we want to take something off of there, those sides, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I like what you had before. I think it was like this, right, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was rotated around, yeah. Yeah, like that. About like that, and let me just... No. Yeah, this needs to be, this is too high here. Yeah. I think, I think this one is... We will have these three up on a bit of a hill. Yes, that's true. So, we don't have to reduce the roots too, too much. No. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the location looks good. Yeah, right, let should me have we, a look from the front here. I'm just going should to... Should we try to wire them in now, or...? Uh, I would wait till we get all the other trees positioned. Sitting, sitting position? Yeah, because that may have yeah. to change. It may have to shift and... Yeah. Um, yeah, I think... I'm worried that they're looking a little evenly spaced. Um, I know what you mean. There's no unified feeling to them at the moment what if we um, what if we rotated the clump this all three yeah, that I think, way i think so like this like that yeah that helps a lot i i, I think that's better 
and I think we've got to have these two trees paired together and a slight, slightly bigger separation between the larger tree and these two. Okay. That's better because That's good. yeah, it doesn't look so even now. Okay. We've got a random spacing between the trees and these two trees aren't facing you front on. Yeah. So I think it's looking quite good now. Okay. Yeah. Have a look from the front anyway. Jonathan, and does that look yeah. more natural to you? It, re it really does. Yeah, okay. But I actually just, I, I, I like them just the way they're kind of sitting just slightly off vertical. Yeah. It's just slightly yeah, off vertical. Just this one's natural. Yeah. But these are slightly off vertical, which I kind of like. I, I don't it, know if yeah. we can maintain that or not. But well, we can try. I yeah. think it. Will, I think it'll be all right. So okay. So I think we gotta okay. start preparing the yeah. the second largest trees and yeah. position those in. Okay. This has got a monumental root base on it. Look at these roots, <laughs> and they are not going to stay with us. They're about to say goodbye. I can find it. There we go. And there we go. One, two. And we got a couple more over here. The one down here. One there. That's looking pretty good. What do you think, Marjo? Yeah, I think that's that's gonna fit in there nicely. That's gonna be our last transitioning white bark perch tree that's going to the plan over here. Alright. Five trees planted in here. There's the group of three. There's this one here. And here's this one over here. The rest of them are going to be the small trees that we've got on the periphery of the forest. So now that we're getting closer, we're gonna to have to make sure that we don't have too much of a normality so that it, it's, it looks more natural than it currently is. We've got to squeeze them in and then wire them down and then we can start uh, finishing this uh, composition up. So we started out with a plan. And the plan was going to be this. But so much for plans. This is what we ended up with because in natural habitat, we need to make it look like it was really where it was. Out in the middle of nowhere in a forest. And when we look at it, that's what we wanted to see. So we've done a lot of work. There was a lot more roots to this than we really thought there were. And now we are going to take these up a bit and we're going to raise them. And then we've got the, the huge challenge of wiring them into the lower grid so that they don't move before we start adding the soil. So this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're very close to the final composition of the trees. Everything's looking fairly naturally spaced in the forest. There's no clusters where trees look too tightly packed together. We've got lots of spaces at the edge of the pot, which gives it a nice natural feel. And we've got a bit of a hill up top here that displays all the tree trunks really nicely. So I think other than some final tweaking, I think we're ready to position the trees permanently, wiring them in to the grid underneath, and eventually fill it in with soil. The shim and shift a little bit, eh? And the height, I think, is good on that, isn't it? It's coming down the hill. I think we need the five in the middle. I think it's gotta be part of Here? this. Yeah, I think it's gotta be part of this center five group to break up that, you know, the four. How's that? It, yeah. Uh, have a look at it. See what okay. you think. It's, I don't know how we're going to nail it down. It's, it's fairly got, even. We've got nothing underneath it. Yeah, it's got to go right where you got it. Right now. Right okay. there. Okay. Let me see if I can. Out there a bit. Soil will do that. That looks fine. That looks fine. So the only one we got left is this one. So now we've got this arduous task of filling the voids. 
and keeping our tree positions. Yeah. Yeah, I think this one could be tilted just a little more over this way. Time to get another bag of soil. Okay. There's a lot of voids in here we gotta get filled up, isn't there? Yep. Now how heavy do you think this will be in the end? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, to get it on my bench, yeah. I've got to get my three grandsons who are all monsters okay. to pick it up. Yeah, it won't be light, will it? Grandpa's not going to be able to do this on his own. <laughs> God forbid it's so good we have to take it to a show. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure that'll come. <laughs> No time soon. That looks much better this tree right now. Good. It's I, either this. Have a look, Nigel. Yeah, yeah. I think this is either got to go in or this has got to come out. Is right, this, yeah, I agree. Right there looks good. Is that where it's got to be? Yeah. Okay. It's looking quite good from the front. Um, one thing we want to avoid is making this hill smooth. Yeah. So I think when we get the moss in that, we'll have like steps, steps. where there's a change of terrain and clumps and I agree and I think that'll look really good I think it'll look natural if you have like this smooth rolling hill it looks like something in a park yeah. rather than something you see in nature so we got to the point now where all of the trees have been anchored you can probably see a little bit of the wiring uh, that became uh, a, an interesting uh, exercise because we thought oh we got this lovely grid underneath and we started to push the wire through it and we realized that the grid was nailed down to the pot so much that we couldn't get the wire under it. So here we go. We had to pry everything up and it was uh, quite a task because we had everything placed in spot and then the angles of the trees changed. So three hours later, I think we've got what we need as far as the tree placement. And we've taken all the air spaces out with our chopsticks. Uh, now we've got uh, to go to phase two. And phase two will be to shape the forest and do the landscaping and then go back and see what subtle changes we need to make to maybe shim up one tree or another. After a couple of days settling here, we'll see how the settling actually goes. So we'll come back to this in uh, segment number two and uh, we'll reveal what the finished product looks like. So okay. we're gonna water these plants now, finally, and hopefully soak everything in. I'm starting to see a few small roots that we're going to have to trim off, and, but uh, once we get the moss on there, it'll hold those roots in place just fine. That's the end of part one of creating a silver birch forest. I think Jonathan and I got this forest off to a good start. And I'm looking forward to part two, where we'll be doing all the landscaping and pruning the trees up. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>